especially through the winter when we get really big numbers, thousands of birds, but by making it wetter, we'll improve it for really threatened mammals like water vole, damselflies especially. We get the beautiful scarce emerald damselfly here, so these conditions will be perfect for it. So Vangewick uh, actually sits within a, uh, the Northern Thames shore and the grazing marshes of South Essex, um, that, which spread across you know, probably two, two and a half thousand hectares. The RSPB manages around 800 hectares and Vangewick here is, is actually around 100 hectares, but it's a very important piece of that jigsaw. So climate change is a real threat for us because we're actually in the driest part of the country um, and we're, we're seeing drier, hotter summers uh, that dry these wetlands out um, very quickly and actually then make them unfavourable for some of the species that need wet habitat. So by adapting our grazing marshes so that we can hold more of the winter water on site, it then allows them to stay wetter for longer. So some of the works that we've done here is we've created a perimeter bund. You can actually see this bund here behind us. This is a, a shallow bank. Um, we've created new foot drains. Now foot drains are very shallow ditches and, and also made them quite natural looking. So they look like the old ditches that you would have had on these grazing marshes in the past. Yeah, so this winter has been dry. Last winter was very, very wet. Uh, we may well remember the flooding that we were seeing on telly, um, but this year was very dry. Um, one of the driest that I've known really. But even so, with the work that we've done here through the Species Survival Fund project, we've got water here on the marsh and it's still very wet and, and we could make it even wetter. Uh, we've got the capacity to do that. We've got the capacity to hold water, pump water. Um, so even on a dry year, we are adapting to climate change to make this future proof for decades to come. We are facing some, some real issues, not just locally, but you know, globally. But here, with putting in these adaptations, we are going to be able to see wetlands thrive. Uh, so that does give me hope uh, that we can see tumbling lapwing and uh, chipping red shank and, and dragonflies and hoverflies just darting above the water level, laying eggs and you know, producing populations for the future. It's why I do the job. Essex coast um, is going to be heavily affected by uh, sea level rise in the future. So at the moment you've got your sea wall coming down that keeps the sea from going onto the land and then you've just got one level of salt marsh and um, that will gradually go under. But here we've designed it with all the material that Crossrail made. We've designed it with these shallow slopes you can see behind so that therefore as sea levels rise all the different habitats all the way through from mud flat lower, mid, upper salt marsh and to the grassland where we're standing now, they can all creep up the slopes as the, as the um, waters rise. Behind the seawall, we've also created um, several saline lagoons. And these are really important for um, birds to roost on at high tides in winter and where we get the huge flocks of wintering wildfowl and waders down. And they can use those when the rest of the salt marsh and mudflats has gone underwater and they can use these saline lagoons in the islands within them for safe uh, roosting spaces and also for feeding outside of the um, high tide window. 
we might not sink it at times, but and the dryness of the reserve means that some of the fresh water is already evaporating away in some of the warm weather we've been having. And that means that birds such as lapwing and redshank, the soil becomes too hard and not and moist enough so they can't get their beaks in to get the invertebrates they need. And then the saline habitats where their wet edges there can hopefully provide that source of food for them. The other good thing about saline lagoons is that there's a plentiful supply of seawater in the rivers around the reserve so we can get the levels into the lagoons exactly how we want them and we're not relying on rainwater which is predicted to become a lot more erratic in its supply um, as uh, climate change hits. Mm -hmm.